Hi, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy with the next Rhythm Chalk Talk. The last one was really tough, and I uh, know a lot of you may not have gotten it right away. But remember, Chalk Talks assume you know the basics. What I'm trying to do is get you used to reading more difficult tracings. This one won't be as bad. But don't forget, you can always log on to ecgacademy.com to watch a whole series of videos from basic to advanced. Let me help you become an ECG expert. And stay tuned for more Chalk Talks every week. Well, anyway, this, as I said, is an intermediate one. It's certainly not as bad as the last one. But let's just give you a little clinical background. Uh, imagine this patient is being monitored uh, for some post-operative pro um, problems, and the nurse calls that the patient uh, all of a sudden has developed a heart rate of about 40 beats per minute. And uh, you have to uh, look at the EKG and figure out what's going on. Well, you uh, look at the forest, and the QRS complexes certainly seem to be regular. And uh, if you uh, measure the rate uh, starting at this heavy line and count off 300, 150, 175, 60, 50, um, you know, it is, uh, you know, 40 beats per minute or so. Um, that's about, that's pretty accurate. Uh, so um, let's see, are there any P waves? Uh, we can see P waves. Yes, indeed. If you look in front of the QRS complex, you see what looks like a normal P wave in front of every QRS. Um, it's upright. The PR interval measures um, about 180 milliseconds or so. So uh, uh, that seems to be normal. So um, one of the one of the more likely possibilities is that, is that this is sinus bradycardia. And sinus bradycardia occurs commonly postoperatively, and um, you'd be tempted to just say, okay. Um, this is sinus brady, and um, you know, treat the patient accordingly. But there's there's something going on here that's more than just sinus brady, and that's what these chalk talks are all about: um, getting you used to looking for things out of the ordinary, uh, things a little more advanced than what you'll see in the textbooks. Okay, um, and and I'll give you a hint. Remember that the electrical characteristics of a QRS complex. Um, in, a, in, a, in, in particular, P wave. Let's start with the P wave. The P wave voltage changes relatively rapidly. If you, the rate of change of a P wave is uh, fast compared with um, the T wave, uh, let me just put that in plain English. P waves look a little more spiky uh, because the in technical terms, the frequency content includes a lot of higher frequency components, whereas T waves tend to be lower frequency um, electrical signals with slower rates of change of voltage, so they're more smooth and gradually changing in voltage. All right, so that's a clue. Um, when we go back to this EKG, uh, we'll change color just to provide a little contrast. Here's the P wave and the QRS, and everything looks fairly normal. But when you look at the T wave, it's by no means smooth. Um, these T waves are very bumpy. It looks like a camelback. Um, and what you need to be able to recognize is that this is clearly a very abnormal-looking T wave. And it's, it looks abnormal because there is a P wave superimposed on top of the T wave. Um, this P wave doesn't conduct, um, so there's no QRS following it. And so you think, oh, blocked P waves. Well, this must be AV block. Um, no, that's not quite right. Um, because in order to be able to diagnose AV block, you need to be able to demonstrate that the P to P interval is regular. And if you take this P wave and you take the next P wave, and you measure halfway in between, um, indeed, there is nothing there. Uh, and so that you might say, well, uh, there's no P wave here, but maybe maybe we got the P wave rate wrong. So uh, let's, let's measure from this P wave to this one. Where would the next one fall if that was the atrial rate? Well, it would fall in here someplace. And then maybe have another one over here. 
before you came uh, to this P-wave. So neither of those of those cases are true. So uh, so what what is this then? Um, what how would we classify um, this this P wave superimposed on the T? Well, it's not on time. It's early. So in, in basic terms, it's a premature atrial beat or a premature atrial contraction or a PAC or an APC, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, it all means the same. It's an atrial event that occurs earlier than it should. Now, that can occur. Remember that uh, the atria um, are made up of electrically active cells, and any cell in the atria can give rise to an electrical signal. When, you have, when you're post-operative, there's lots of adrenaline circulating around, and so areas in the, um, in the atrium can fire, and you can have an electrical signal that gives rise to a P wave, and that's what we are seeing as a premature atrial beat. Well, but it didn't conduct. Why didn't it conduct? Well, remember that the AV node takes some time to recover from the previous beat. It has a certain refractory period. So after this beat conducts down the AV node, there's a certain period of time where the AV node is busy conducting that beat to the ventricle, and it takes a, a split second to recover. So when this P wave hits the AV node, it finds that the AV node is not capable of conducting the beat properly. And so the AV node fails to conduct the beat, and you get a P wave that blocks. Well, I don't like the word block because it implies that something is wrong, that the AV node didn't conduct, didn't, didn't behave normally. But in fact, premature beats like this commonly don't conduct, and it's sort of normal behavior for the AV node, because the AV node, in fact, acts kind of like a safety valve, and it prevents very rapid electrical rhythms like atrial fibrillation and flutter from from being conducted down to the ventricles at, at super high rates. So the AV node's kind of like a funnel. And you think of a funnel as... Um, uh, as a device that where you can pour lots of water into the top of it, but only a certain amount is going to come out the bottom. So the AV node is like a filter or a funnel. And it filtered out this P wave because it was just too early. So then what do you make of this rhythm strip? Well, officially what we would call this um, is atrial bigeminy. Why? Because every other beat is premature. You've heard of ventricular bigeminy, where every other beat is a ventricular premature beat. Well, this is atrial bigeminy. We have a normal beat, and then a PAC, and then a little compensatory pause, and then a normal beat and a PAC, and another compensatory pause. So you have atrial bigeminy, but the PACs are blocked, or shall we say, non-conducted. So what I like to call this trip non-conducted atrial bigeminy. And it's responsible for the fact that the ventricular rate suddenly went to 41 beats per minute. But there's nothing wrong with the sinus node. Um, it happens to be the atrial myocardium that's the problem because of all those um, uh, post-operative hormones running around, uh, you've got just a lot of atrial ectopy. And um, in the absence of symptoms, we generally would not treat this. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, some people would would um, add an antiarrhythmic drug if it gets to be too slow, but that's really not necessary as long as the patient is hemodynamically stable. So it's a, it was an interesting strip. I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, these chalk talks, as I said, are designed to get you uh, looking at things that you uh, normally won't see in a textbook and to get you comfortable with reading more difficult tracings. So I hope that helped. So remember to log on to ecgacademy.com so you too can become an ECG expert.